Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, uh, Monitoring the Golden Signals for Kubernetes. My name is Summer. I'll be your moderator. I'm the community manager here at Instana, and I'm super excited to be hosting this session today. Uh, today's speaker is Kevin Crawley. Before I hand it over to Kevin, I have a few housekeeping items to cover regarding this webinar. Uh, so first, today's webinar will be recorded and available on demand after the live session, and it'll be sent to you via email, or you can find it on Instana's website. Next, uh, we'll be giving away five copies of the Unicorn Project by Gene Kim to attendees of this webinar. Uh, winners will be randomly drawn, but you must attend the entire webinar to qualify. Um, so we'll let you know who the winners are towards the end. Uh, the winners will receive an email from us later today for shipping logistics, so uh, just keep an eye out for that. Uh, and finally, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. So if you have any questions for Kevin, please feel free to send it to the Q&A box. Uh, we'll be answering questions at the end of the session. And if we run out of time and we don't get to your question in time, we will follow up afterwards. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off and welcome our speaker, Kevin Crawley. Hi, thank you so much for the introduction, Summer. And uh, as she mentioned, my name is Kevin Crawley. I am a senior developer advocate at Instana. And my job here is really to help uh, our customers and uh, our, our future customers understand the benefits of the Instana product and to understand how they can manage and understand the behave performance and behaviors of their applications using our product, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. So I'm really excited to be sharing on today's topic. And as you can imagine, Kubernetes has become fairly popular these days. And given a lot of the conversations I've had with folks who are managing uh, applications running on Kubernetes, I've rarely, I've rarely been given the same answer on not only what tools they're using to monitor those applications, but more importantly, what they're actually measuring and tracking to ensure those applications and Kubernetes is performing well. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. And at the end of this webinar, I hope you'll gain a better understanding of how the golden signals can be applied to uh, not only the applications that are running within Kubernetes, but more importantly, uh, how you can better understand and take action on those signals and how they relate to the Kubernetes environment as well. So today we, we will describe the golden signals from the Google SRE handbook and how they relate to applications running in Kubernetes. We'll discuss a little bit about how distributed tracing powers the technology that enables Instana to generate the golden signals for both SREs and application developers in real time. And we'll uncover how combining uh, metrics, traces, and logs empower the operators of these complex systems to solve their performance, performance and reliability issues on the spot. So by the end of this webinar, you should uh, not only understand how your services are performing, but how your Kubernetes environment and the configuration of it relates to every single transaction in your system and the golden signals that those transactions produce. So the topics that we're gonna discuss today is we're gonna, we're gonna highlight the golden signals as I mentioned, but we're gonna do a little bit of a history deep dive into, into how we've gotten to the point where uh, we need the golden signals. And we'll talk about the use method of monitoring the red method of monitoring uh, for Kubernetes. We'll talk about how Instana collects and then correlates and aggregates all the telemetry uh, that relate to the golden signals to help you understand your application's health and performance. And then we'll do a product demo. And at the end, uh, we'll, we'll do some discussion based on your, your questions that you've uh, submitted to uh, the Q&A box. So, what is the use method of instrumentation? So uh, use is an acronym which was realized by Brendan Gregg in 2012, which was a method to troubleshoot and find performance bottlenecks for applications running at on what that time at that time were considered modern web scale infrastructure. Um, and we'll we'll unpack this a little bit, but uh, the concept of use and resources over the next few slides, we'll show some of the benefits of this approach, 
As many aspects of performance analysis still rely on these methods, including Instana, but we'll also talk about some of the drawbacks as well. Uh, and uh, really it's important to understand that the, the use method of instrumentation and monitoring was created at a time where microservices and distributed applications really hadn't taken hold yet. This was back in 2012. And I feel like uh, anything that requires a Rosetta Stone to explain something, and for those who may not be familiar with this reference, please bear with me. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of foreshadowing, but in this, in, but in reality, uh, this type of instrumentation is actually really difficult. And so uh, if we need some kind of translation guide that tells us maybe uh, this isn't going to scale well when we start talking about thousands of hosts and ten tens of thousands of instances of services, right? So I'm going to spend a few minutes explaining why this particular approach to monitoring is so difficult to scale. And I mean both organiz organizationally and uh, technical as well. So use was popular at the time because most environments were static. Um, our servers still had names and the cloud, along with all the freedom and choice it was destined to deliver was still relatively in its infancy. So with the use method, we have something called a resource. And this was any physical service or functional component. This could be a CPU, a disk, a bus, a message, uh, a, a message queue, memory, et cetera. Uh, utilization is the average time that the resource was busy servicing work. Saturation is the degree to which the resource has extra work, which it can't service. And this will often be considered a queue. And then errors, pretty self-explanatory, how many error events are happening. And the point of use though, was to monitor the underlying infrastructure to ensure that the host, the networks, and the storage subsystems were operating within some bound or constraint that was specified by the operators. Now, each resource type and use has a different indicator for utilization, saturation, and errors. And these often differ based on the underlying host type or the operating system and their capabilities. It's also highly contextual. There's no contracts here in regards to what each use metric aligns with its corresponding resource type. For example, a CPU utilization could be per CPU or core, or it could be the load average. Uh, with memory, it could be utilization could be the available free memory or what's what's uh, minus what's cached. And saturation, it could be anything from anonymous paging, swapping, or scanning. And, and it, as I mentioned, it, it becomes very uh, contextual and very dependent upon the operator to define what these metrics are and if they matter or not. And, and this is where the operational overhead becomes a nightmare in, these, in our modern environments and in, in, in a Kubernetes environment because cloud native applications are often landing on platforms and providers who may or may not expose these metrics. And in most cases, when they do, you'll incur additional costs for both the labor to build dashboards and alarms and the cost for your provider collecting and storing these metrics. Things come to mind like CloudWatch and, and uh, uh, application insights from uh, Azure, if I'm remembering that correctly. So this is the Rosetta Stone of use monitoring. And right, it, well, it's actually just one quarter of it. Um, but this is just really to illustrate the point about the complexity cost incurred with use. If you're operating a distributed application in Kubernetes, um, the debt incurred by attempting to configure, collect, manage, store, and analyze all this data is tremendous. Now it's worth noting that Instana collects many of these metrics automatically and then correlates it to your application workloads to the distributed traces. And not only that, but it stores, analyzes, and has built, built in alerts already defined for many of these, uh, these metrics and their uh, the the data they collect. So the use method, what are the challenges in collecting it? Um, ideally, you, you should be monitoring all these signals and correlating them back to the business transaction these signals are generated from. And that's the challenge when, when the use monitoring approach is decoupled from APM or application performance monitoring. Because correlating a particular runtime error 
uh, with an overloaded host wasn't really a challenge uh, at the time that this was created because we didn't have hundreds of hosts running our workloads. Now, organizations are now beginning to realize the challenge of the use method when there are literally hundreds or thousands of small services running across hundreds of machines. So how can a small team of two or three SREs collect and analyze telemetry from every single node, from every process, pod, deployment, container, the runtime, uh, the, the, uh, the platform, and then share the understanding of how those metrics relate to the performance of the business application, to, to the user's experience. And this also is further compounded by the diversity Kubernetes permits with regards to the workload types, because many organizations would spend years tooling up for a specific language and runtime with a large uh, single uh, relational database, AKA a monolith. But today with the cloud teams can deliver new services and infrastructure in just a matter of minutes, which is good for business because it means we can ship new features and products faster, iterate faster and fix problem faster but it's bad for the teams who are responsible for, for monitoring those things because of, because of all of the noise it generates. And, and, and this technology still has to be monitored. And with each new component that is introduced into a cloud native environment, whether it be a database, an app service, a message queue, um, anything really, the challenge is not only figuring out what metrics we need to extract from it, but how do we make those metrics mean, accessible and meaningful? Like how do we build the dashboard for it? How do we create the alerts for it? What are my thresholds? Those are the type of questions that, that we have to ask of every new service we introduce into uh, our ecosystem. So the RED method uh, was introduced to help uh, bridge that gap, right? So that we can have a more agnostic approach to monitoring our application services. So this was created uh, in 2015 uh, by uh, Tom Wilkie, uh, the VP of uh, product at Grafana. And he suggested that while use is certainly useful, it rarely answers the questions of how the user is being impacted, right? And uh, for example, let's say a system load of 95 on a machine with only four CPUs is probably bad, right? Um, it means there's a ton of work queued and uh, it's not getting done, right? But how does that actually translate to the user's experience? In a distributed cloud native application, the impact is probably going to be really minimal or even non-existent due to the benefits of having a redundant and fault tolerant architecture. There's probably a dozen other instances of that service that may be serving one fiftieth of the request in two seconds rather than 200 milliseconds. But the primary goal of RED is to deliver metrics which can easily be translated into the customer's experience. And an end user typically only cares about how quickly a service responds and if the response is useful, meaning if, it, if it's erroneous or not. So these metrics can help us understand where the performance bottlenecks are occurring. And in conjunction with use, it can be a powerful way to troubleshoot and understand the performance impacts of the underlying infrastructure on the red key metrics. And this is the approach that Instana actually takes with combining the power of distributed tracing along with application platform and infrastructure metrics. And the idea here is to be agnostic to the technology or the specific entity being monitored, abstracting away those technical details and measuring those key performance ind indicators. And the benefit to this is we can walk away with an understanding of the following key details. Like how busy is my service? What's the throughput or the rate? And this is typically measured in queries per second or queries per minute. The errors, how many, uh, how many failures is my service emitting? What's the error rate? And this can include things like 500 errors, database errors, queue error, transaction errors, things like that. And then, Duration, how slow is my service? What is the latency? And we can get things like, what is the mean average latency of a given service or its endpoints? And we can also look at things like percentiles. You know, what, what are, what's the 95th percentile of latency? What's the 99th percentile? And I'll show you why that matters um, in the demo uh, a little bit later in the presentation. So here we are, 2019, almost 2020, 
And the golden signals was introduced in the SRE handbook by Google. And, and this was, the idea of this was, if you can only measure four metrics, focus on these four. But it, it actually happens to be pretty much exactly the same as the method I just described to you, the red method. And, but it also includes uh, saturation, which is the concept that was defined in use. Uh, and that's more of a technology specific metric that's gonna represent different uh, quality indicators based on the technology that's being monitored. Now, we've already talked about all this, right? But I wanted to reiterate that the fact that the golden signals mostly represent technology agnostic metrics and while those metrics are important, we still have to focus on saturation when we talk about highly distributed, highly scalable applications. So again, just to reiterate, we have latency, the time it takes to service a request, the traffic, service demand, or throughput, this is rate in red, and then errors, uh, the rate of requests which are failing, uh, E for in red. So uh, we have latency or duration, uh, traffic, or uh, rate, and then errors. And then saturation, how full the service is. So where do we get all of this data? Where does it come from? Well, we need to collect information from things like load balancers, web servers, application servers, which could be PHP, Java, Ruby, Python, .NET, no go, um, database servers, any number of them, Oracle, uh, MS SQL, Redis, Cassandra, uh, Q and messaging, SQS, RabbitMQ, Kafka, and then the underlying infrastructure, right? Linux, Windows, and uh, maybe some of y'all are still running Solaris, who knows? So um, for those who are operating Kubernetes or cloud native applications, they've already recognized the challenge in not only collecting all of this telemetry I just went over, um, but also the exponential rise in complexity of the task at hand. And I'll give you an example um, from one of our customers, Single Music, uh, they have a small distributed application of around 30 services. Uh, there's about 100 instances running at any given time, and they ro process roughly 10 to 20,000 business transactions per day. And a business transaction is a sale, right? Now, that environment will generate over 300 million internal transactions every day to fulfill those sales. And these are these are all distributed trace transactions in which we collect information about. And just one of their Spring Boot applications running in a Kubernetes environment will generate over 108,000 points of metric data at one second granularity, which is what Instana collects data at over the course of an hour. Now, if you multiply that by the number of services and the number of instances that are running, that's a tremendous amount of data that has to be collected and aggregated and analyzed. No small team uh, could ever keep up with that. It's just impossible. Instana employs almost 70 engineers now whose sole job is to make sure that the data pipeline that handles that level of uh, metric input runs smoothly and uh, flawlessly. So how are we gonna collect all this event data? Now, modern cloud environments and cloud native orchestration platforms have made it really easy to deploy uh, dozens of different technologies and components. Now, each one of these has a different approach to generating and formatting and exporting metrics. So how do we get all this data and manage it effectively? Um, well, it's been identified that in order to manage and scale these platforms effectively, we need metrics being generated by our infrastructure the platforms, the databases, the application services, and the message queues, the use methodology. But we also need the aggregated service uh, and endpoint metrics that can measure the performance and behavior applications from the user point of view, or rather red. Now, uh, we have to configure our application and proxy services to generate and emit that relevant tem telemetry. So use is collected via metric libraries and frameworks such as JMX, DropWizard, StatsD, whereas red is collected via distributed trace aggregates. So that means we need to pro program our applications and configure them to emit trace telemetry. So what is distributed tracing? Um, how, do we, how, do we, how do we do that? 
Well, within your applications, every method or, or framework that is responsible for communicating outside of the service, whether it be through a REST API call, through a database call, through putting a message on a queue, is going to have a custom header or metadata injected into it, which is intercepted and processed by Instana. And that's what you see in the graph on the right-hand side, where when a request comes in, there's a parent ID assigned to it or a span ID assigned to it. And if there is no span ID currently from the request that came in, then uh, the parent ID is null. Now, every subsequent transaction that happens afterwards has a parent-child relationship. And what that allows us to do is to create a Gantt chart to show the hierarchical structure and the timing of every transaction that occurred after the initial trace was created. So it's demo time. And we're going to cover a few different things in this demo, uh, including a little bit more about what distributed tracing is and, and why it's important. But we're going to cover uh, briefly how the Instana agent is deployed to a Kubernetes cluster and how it instruments not only Kubernetes, but all of the deployments, services, and pods running in your cluster. I'll, I'll cover how the agent injects the instrumentation into our applications so that those distributed trace metrics and those, uh, those underlying platform and framework specific metrics are generated and exported but I'll also cover how our interactive dashboards are being generated from the distributed traces that are collected by our agent and how we derive the golden signals uh, from those traces in application perspectives. We'll then journey through uh, the requests made on the front end of our demo application all the way to the back end through a message queue, a database, and demonstrate how each service and component that request traversed is visualized and available for you to debug and troubleshoot. I'll also cover a few different areas where the metric data we collect may cover the saturation KPI based on this particular application or this particular component that you're looking at. Saturation, again, is one of those, um, those key metrics which is contextual and highly dependent upon what you're looking at and what you're analyzing. And we'll cover a few different ones based on the demo app that, that we're gonna look at here in a moment. Ultimately, the goal of this demo is to give you a high-level understanding of how Instana monitors not only the golden signals of your Kubernetes application, but all of the underlying metrics from use as well, which is really invaluable when tracking down configuration and infrastructure issues. And we'll show that in the demo as well. So, all right, the screen we're looking at now uh, is, is what you'll land on if you sign up for an Instana trial. And these are the instructions of how to install Instana in, in several different platforms. Today, we're gonna focus on Kubernetes. So if we click on Kubernetes, we can see that we have a few different ways of deploying uh, Kubernetes through managed and vanilla type deployments. In this case, I'm gonna deploy it through a Helm chart and I already have this in a terminal, so I'm going to switch to that, and uh, we will we will get started with our with our demo. So in this case, I'm going to just copy this into my terminal, which is already connected to my Kubernetes cluster, and we'll deploy here shortly. So if we go back into my browser window. We will see um, within Kubernetes here, uh, this is the Kubernetes environment I have set up with Stan's robot shop, which is over here. And uh, you can actually download and set up Stan's robot shop for yourself on your local machine. There will be a link to that in the resources. And uh, on my slide deck at the bottom of it, there's my Twitter handle. And if you follow me on Twitter, I'm gonna post this slide deck as soon as we're finished. And uh, at the end of the slide deck is a list of all the resources and documents and uh, reference material that I used in creating this presentation. So if we refresh this, this workload here, we can see that, um, if we go up to workloads, 
and then refresh, we can see that Instano is deployed as a daemon set. And so for those who are not familiar with, with Kubernetes and this terminology, a daemon set is simply an approach to deployment where the workload is scheduled to be deployed on every worker node in the cluster. And so in this case, this particular cluster is four nodes. And we can see that uh, the Instana agent is deployed on all four of our nodes within our Kubernetes cluster. So if we go back over here to Instana, uh, we can see that it's starting to discover some workloads. Let's see if we can, looks like it hasn't fully discovered, but what, what's actually happening under the hood here is each, each agent that is deployed on every host is auto discovering all the processes and the applications and the components that are running in those nodes. So in this case, uh, Instana is discovering the host itself, which we can see here. Uh, we can see that we have a GKE cluster. Here's some of the details around that cluster. And we can see that it's discovered that Kubernetes is running on it. It's discovered some Docker containers. It's discovered Node.js application and Python applications. And the way it does this is it, it scans the process table and looks for uh, key signatures, which it understands. It understands what a, a Java workload looks like. It understands what a Python workload looks like. It understands what a node workload looks like. It understands when Kubernetes is installed because it, it, it sees the Kubernetes components on the host. And then the agent will connect to the Kubernetes API and start collecting information about the Kubernetes deployment. It will then also connect to the Python application or the JVM application and byte load the instrumentation libraries into our application while it's running. You don't have to restart it. You don't have to reconfigure it. So that application will then begin emitting that trace data and that metric data to the Instana backend, which is what we're seeing right, happen right now, is all these components being discovered and instrumented and, and giving us that data we need. So let's jump over to the, uh, the Kubernetes cluster. And we can see here, uh, we, have, we have some basic information around uh, the, the allocation of requests, the limits, the memory allocation and limits and the pod allocation. But this is, this is a very broad view. This view tells me all about my Kubernetes cluster, but I'm really focused on robot shop. That's my application. I wanna make sure it's working properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a application perspective based on that, um, that namespace. So in here, it looks like it's already created. I was under the impression I deleted it, but I could be wrong. No, all right, so robot shop. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a tag and I'm gonna tell this that I want all the components within this namespace to become uh, my application perspective. So what that's going to do is that every service within that namespace and all of its traces will become aggregated. And in a few moments here, once I start the load generators, we'll, we'll see this populated, uh, is going to generate the golden metrics for me. And I will highlight those once we, once we get some load uh, pushed out to this, uh, to this cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start my load generators. And we'll switch back to the application. So within a few moments, we'll, we'll start seeing data here, but I'm gonna go back to Kubernetes and explain a little bit about um, you know, the information we do collect about the application. So we can see here that Robot Shop has a number of deployments. We can uh, click into that. And, and here's the interesting part about um, 
about the saturation golden metric, right? Uh, and again, I mentioned that saturation is very contextual and uh, and is specific to the workload we're trying to monitor. It's not it's not the same for everything. In this case, saturation here would be our CPU usage uh, based on the limits and the uh, the requests that we have. So we know that if uh, if if the usage of the robot shop namespace started getting uh, closer to our limit, that means we're not going to be able to deploy anything else and scale this application. So we 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 effectively have to uh, we have to create more resources. So that could mean resizing our our pool, our node, or um, adding additional nodes to our system. So within each one of these uh, uh, systems, we can see all the individual deployments and the components. So we can see here we have a cart service, a catalog service, a dispatcher, which is essentially a message queue handler, uh, as well as uh, database components. It, it, there's several components in here. And uh, it's, it's pretty difficult to understand the performance of your application when it's distributed like this. Uh, with a monolith, it was much easier because we only had one thing we had to monitor. Whereas with this service, because it's split up, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So let's go back to our application perspective. And uh, we should start seeing some load in here showing up, and we do. So uh, let's switch to the last five minutes. So let's kind of unpack what we're looking at here and, and why it's important. What are the golden metrics for our Kubernetes application, the robot shop um, in this particular view? And this dashboard is very interactive. And I'm going to walk through some of the things we can kind of dig into here um, and, uh, and, and dive into to help understand where some errors or some performance problems are are happening. Um, some of them should be pretty readily apparent. Uh, others maybe not so much, and that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, dive in and help explain some of it. So uh, over here on the left side of the I'm I'm trying out my new drawing tools, so please bear with me. So over here, um, my calls, this is essentially my throughput or my rate. Uh, this is how often transactions are coming into this particular application across all of its services. So uh, if, I, if I go over to services, I'm gonna see a list of uh, every service that is running in my application and the number of requests that are being uh, sent, it, sent to it, as well as the mean latency and the error rate. And we can see here down at the payment service, there's, there's a pretty high error rate. And we, we also noticed this in the summary as well. We, we, we can see here that you know, a fraction of all of the requests across all those services are, are emitting some kind of error rate. But it's really easy for us to figure out which one is is the most erroneous just by clicking on the errors button here. And it tells us that the payment service has the most errors. So let's click on that and uh, see if we can discover uh, what the problem is, right? So we can see that uh, this particular endpoint has 51% errors. And again, this is all collected from distributed traces. And uh, let's let's unpack what what a distributed trace uh, actually looks like. So I'm going to analyze all the calls on this particular endpoint in this service in this application perspective. And we can see here that uh, this particular endpoint has a very high error rate. In fact, it's causing all of the errors from what we can tell. So if we click into it, uh, we can we can open any one of those. And we can see that distributed trace graph where we can see that this particular um, request came back with a 500 internal server error. And the error message that we got back from it is we, we have a non-iterable uh, type object. And we can see where in the application that the error occurred. <clears throat> 
That's a pretty straightforward understanding of, of, of discovering errors within individual transactions of our application. But I, I do want to get to the point where I can talk a little bit about how um, we, can, we can dive into performance issues from the perspective of the user, right? Because ultimately what we care about is our user's experience with our applications running inside Kubernetes. That's why we care about the golden metrics because that tells us uh, the performance from the aspect of the consumer or of the user. So with this uh, particular, with Instana, you can also monitor the front end of the application, which uh, is, we can see here, it's a JavaScript application. So uh, I'm going to uh, log in. And I will, I'm going to create a, a new shopping cart. I'm going to buy a, a few things. I like Stan, so I'm going to buy some Stan. I'm also going to give him a vote because I like him too. All right, so I want to now check out. So I'm going to click on check out in the United States. And so the expected behavior here is that it should automatically uh, give me some options or a drop down here, but it's taking a really long time for that to happen. Uh, hopefully, eventually we will get the drop down here and we can, we can finish calculating what our shipping is. So slowly but surely, So I'm in Tennessee, I'm waiting for Tennessee to show up, but it looks like it's not going to. So I'm just gonna click one of these and calculate. And I'm going to confirm, I'm gonna pay. It's a lot of money I just spent. And so as, as a user, I might create a ticket or, or send to support or chat, say it really took a long time for me to calculate shipping. Or for instance, most people are probably just going to give up and go somewhere else and buy from Amazon or something like that, right? Um, so as an operator of this of this platform, I want to know uh, when that error occurs and, 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 and why it occurred, right? So uh, in this case, I can easily analyze my request from the uh, from the aspect of of the user. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm filtering every transaction that came in through the front end. based on the user emails and it looks like my name isn't showing up here quite yet so we may uh we may need to divert and uh and take a look at latency from okay so in this case i'm just going directly to it and we can see here that anytime this particular call came into our application, the latency was really high. So uh, I can click on that and analyze that request and see within that transition, that entire session, where, um, where that occurred, which you can see here that this particular call to the back end took a long time, but, but that doesn't tell me why, right? So, if I click on view backend trace, I'm gonna jump directly to uh, that trace that the backend handled, my API handled within Kubernetes. And I can see 
uh, the information around uh, who, I, who, who made that transaction, where they were, um, some, some browser information. But we can see here that the database took a really long time to respond. But, but why? Why did that take us such a long time to respond? Um, because the application didn't have a problem. It, it all the time was from the database, and we know that from the distributed transaction. Well, if I click on the, uh, the MySQL infrastructure, I'm taken to the Kubernetes view of that service that answered that database call. And I can see here that uh, my, my usage is pegged right against the limit. So more than likely, this database is just overloaded, and I need to provision more resources to it. So I can, I can furthermore, I can, I can dig even further into this particular um, workload by, by looking at the container. And we can see here that the metrics on the container being collected uh, tell me that, yeah, I'm definitely hitting that 20%. Um, throttling is, is occurring. And uh, but memory usage is fine. But then I can also look at information around uh, the, the MySQL database. Like what are, what are my transactions? We can see things are, are slowing down actually. Like the transactions that are being able to, to be accessed are, aren't, uh, aren't being answered as quickly. So the transactions are slowing down. And we can see uh, as well around, uh, again, the Kubernetes pod. But we get additional information as well and I want to cover before we, we wrap up one more thing around different uh, types of uh, saturation um, metrics that we can be concerned about. So for instance, with uh, RabbitMQ, uh, we, we know that the, we know that RabbitMQ is a message queue and we can, we can take a look at uh, the, the metrics on RabbitMQ, and we know that with any type of uh, any type of message queue, if uh, if we are publishing more messages than we're delivering and acknowledging, then that queue is backed up. And Instana has built-in alerts around these types of anomalies. To where, if, um, for instance, if if the if the hit rate on Redis is less than eighty percent, we know that we may be u utilizing Redis inefficiently. We may be storing data in there in which isn't really cat isn't really getting hit by the cache implementation that much. And in in this case, in RabbitMQ with a message queue, we know that uh, publishing more messages that are being delivered is a sign of high saturation. And Instana has all of this information already built in. Uh, for instance, here we can we've detected that the error rate on the payment service is uh, is too high, and we created an alert around it. And you can you can immediately jump to it and inspect it. So it's really important that uh, your monitoring solution has that full context, so that you can you can easily dive in and troubleshoot issues without having to jump around a bunch of tools, and without having to uh, to to plumb all of this uh, yourself. This is all out of the box, built in to Instana, and is delivered as soon as you install it in your cluster. So uh, just gonna wrap up real quick. Um, this is a post from Peter Bogon, who wrote about combining the power of tracing metrics and logging. And when we combine all of them, we get request scoped aggregatable events. And what that means is that we're not treating our services like a black box anymore. We're, we're collecting a ton of telemetry from it so that we can understand when the application is having problems. We have a lot more context around those events and those transactions. And we have those interactive dashboards that I showed you. And those metrics being generated by those aggregated request scoped events. All right, so in summary, the golden metrics are an evolution of use in red, which are devised to give SREs the ability to set meaningful uh, indicators and objectives, service level indicators, service level objectives. Uh, the underlying data models leveraged to create the golden metrics are still relevant when you're analyzing performance and troubleshooting bugs. Just having distributed tracing isn't enough. You need to be able to tie it back to Kubernetes 
you need to be able to tie it back to the resource constraints that you've set in Kubernetes, and you need to be able to tie it back to those saturation metrics, which are critical in understanding whether or not your system is overloaded. And Instana deploys a low to zero configuration agent, which knows how to instrument hundreds of technologies, frameworks, languages, databases, orchestrators, and operating systems in, effort, in an effort to minimize, minimize toil. And uh, Instana then correlates and converges on all of those different signals to empower you, the operator, of these cloud native applications to deeply understand and leverage every underlying facet of their application's performance. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Summer and then we'll do a Q and we'll, we'll, we'll probably spend the rest of the hour doing Q and A, if that's all right with everybody. Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope you all uh, had an opportunity to learn a little bit more about Instana and how we uh, derive golden metrics for your apps in Kubernetes. Over to you, Summer. Awesome. Thank you for that presentation and demo, Kevin. Um, for today's book giveaway, we have randomly chosen five names. Um, they'll be receiving a free copy of the Unicorn Project by Gene Kim. Um, and apologies in advance if I mispronounce your name. Uh, so the winners are Kyle Maggard, Matt Collins, Fernando Gonzalez, Susan Gapper, and Michael Sider. Or cider. Um, so uh, we'll be in touch with you five shortly. Uh, keep an eye on your email you use to sign up for this webinar. Um, thank you all. Uh, so I will hand it over to Kevin for any Q&A. Um, please submit your questions in the question box. If we don't answer it in time, we'll be sure to reach out to you directly. Okay, Kevin. Thank you again, Summer. Okay, so um, and just to make sure, um, we do have a 14 day free trial available. I'll leave this up here for you to uh, to bookmark if you're interested in learning more about Instana or just giving it a test run in your in your staging or development environments. I would uh, I would highly encourage you to sign up for a free trial. So Summer, I have a question for you. I'm not seeing any Q and A box. Should this just come through the chat window? Um. I can see it. I can see it on my control panel. Um, right now, I have a question uh, from F Fernando, actually. Um, okay. doesn't, it, is Instana capable with service message like um, Istio or Linkerd? Um, this is something that we're, we're currently looking deeper into. Uh, we do operate in environments running a service mesh. And we will collect uh, open tracing formatted metrics. So if you were to configure uh, any component that is capable of uh, emitting open trace telemetry and in the future open telemetry or open, uh, I think it's open telemetry. It's the new project that's coming out. Uh, then theoretically we should be able to collect um, not only the, the the traces at the application layer, but also the traces at the uh, the service mesh layer, because there's there's a couple things to to take take into consideration with service mesh, is that um, with service mesh and tracing at that proxy layer, you're only going to capture what goes through the proxy. So if you're talking to um, legacy systems, or you're talking to systems such as a database or a message queue that don't go through that proxy then you're going to lose context of that transaction. And so uh, it's, it, it, it's really important to understand that with a service mesh, uh, you don't get full observability out of the box unless you, you're doing complete greenfield and you're doing everything through that proxy. Uh, otherwise, um, you're, you're going to miss out on, on some of those key performance indicators that we talked about. Okay, um, I have another question that came in. Uh, Kyle asks, how is Instana different from Datadog or New Relic? Um, this probably, this is, this is a big question. Um, there's several differences between uh, both products. Uh, I'm gonna highlight some of the bigger differences with, and cover both of them at the same time. Uh, the approach that we take with instrumentation 
and the approach that we take with uh, the, the fact that of, of getting that telemetry data from the application is an order of magnitude more automated than either of those solutions. With, with, um, with our competitors, uh, typically application services have to be configured and usually code has to be introduced in the form of dependencies and deployed and restarted in order for you to be able to collect that telemetry information from your applications. Uh, within Stana and with uh, languages such as uh, Java, PHP, Python, and .NET, we do that work for you. So once the agent detects that process, we do the configuration on the fly and we inject the instrumentation into the application at runtime so you don't have to reconfigure and restart and set up all of all of these systems uh, to emit this telemetry that you need. Uh, we also generate those custom application perspective dashboards. That's something that's very unique to Instana, which gives you the golden signals for the applications that you as the developer or the operator really care about. You can become, you, you can be very granular in terms of, of what metadata is, um, anal which metadata is used to define the services that you want to, you want to aggregate those trace metrics from. So uh, as, as you, I showed you in the demo, I created an application perspective around the robot shop namespace. But let's say that namespace may have components from three or four different teams. Um, you could then further, you could add another meta tag to that saying, I am interested only in uh, the Kubernetes tag equals team A services. And it's only gonna aggregate, aggregate the metrics for those particular services that has that label associated with the service, which is something you would define in the Kubernetes template. Um, also, with both, uh, with all of our competitors, we collect data at a much higher granularity and we don't sample. And so with one second granularity means that we have more accuracy so that we can do artificial intelligence and machine learning on the data that we collect. And we can do anomaly detection based on those metrics. And because we don't sample means you do get more of the P99 and the P95 outliers in, in lower volume systems. So with P99s, that means less than 1% of your requests may be experiencing additional latency in comparison to the rest of the request. And if you're sampling one out of 1,000 requests, you're gonna miss those. So those are some of the key differences. There's a, there's a lot more nuance and a lot more uh, details that I could um, dive into there. But if you're really interested in, in doing a POC and, and understanding and seeing those differences, I would highly recommend signing up for a trial and, uh, and reaching out to the uh, solutions engineers who reach out to you to help you better understand um, what the differences would be for your particular environment. Okay, I have another question. Um, let's see. How do we convert back and forth? Oh, I'm gonna to try to read the question. Uh, let's see, how, how do we convert back and forth open tracing ID to correlation ID used by Instana? Um, so if you're, if you're using open tracing and the Instana tracer within the same application, technically this, this is not a, um, this is just simply not feasible. And the reason is, is because the, the context and the, the generation of the ID is specific to the SDK and to the runtime. And as a result of that, uh, we're not, without a shim or some sort of, uh, of layer running inside the application, doing that correlation work, uh, this, this just simply isn't possible. Now, 
I mentioned, yeah, you can put a shim or, or some kind of component in there to do that work for you. But when you're talking about, um, and, and this is some of the, the key differentiators that I talked about just a moment ago, when you're tracing every single request and you're not sampling and you're doing this correlation work internally, that's gonna create a lot of overhead. And um, not only that, but because open tracing is heavily rely, relies on sampling to negate the performance impact of not sampling with, with those open tracing libraries, um, you know, what happens to those requests in which Instana captured, but open tracing didn't because it got sampled out. So these are just some of the technical challenges that, that I'm aware of. I think there's some more that I'm not I'm not familiar with uh, that our engineering team is, has tried to tr tried to overcome. Now, uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that hopefully the Open Telemetry project will create um, a solution to this by being able to, to use multiple collectors and having a common header format with the W3C trace standard, which I think yesterday was just uh, approved essentially. And so this is something that we're also investigating and in implementing over uh, in the new year. So again, no promises here. Uh, I just know I interact with the product team quite frequently. So this is something that uh, we, are, we are definitely focusing on next year. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. So we are uh, out of time. We went a little over, but I know uh, we have a couple more questions and we'll be sure to get to those uh, via email. Um, and so a link to view the on-demand webinar will be sent to every one of you uh, to your email. Um, or you can also visit our website to access the recording. Uh, that should be available probably by tomorrow. Um, so thank you all for joining us and we hope you have a lovely holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You'll have a great weekend.